Hey guys, new disclaimer. I am not sure what's true or false in this video. I take gossip and tea from online, from magazines, from books, from word of mouth, from all over, and I ball it up together and I tell you guys a story. Now, let's get to the video. Doom, 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 doom. Yeah, there's something wrong with me. Scandalites and Cecil Squad. I know y'all got questions for me. I told you how that three days ago this video would be complete. But life kept throwing me curveballs, making it harder for me. I know I told y'all three days ago this video would be complete. And I know y'all been wondering where Ashley's been checking my video feed, but I can't. Yeah, I can't. Oh, I can't. Telling y'all this and telling y'all that it turned out to be fiction, but when I said it, it was a fact. And I know y'all been like, where is this bald-headed O? Her name is Ashley, she should practice what she preach. Hi everybody, this is Ashley with Ashley Says So, and I am finally back with another Old Hollywood Scandals video. And listen y'all, if my very white impression did not explain things to you guys, I swear that I will a little later on in life in a live or something. Just to let y'all know that everything that could have happened in my life happened at one moment. Both good and some very, very bad. So, you know, Ashley had to get some things together, but now I am back. I am going to skip the member shout outs for this video. Uh, simply because it takes a lot of time to edit that and I know y'all have been waiting for this video So without further ado today We are going to be talking about the very suave debonair and just the coolest man around child Mr. Barry White Let's get to it. Barry White was born Barry Eugene Carter on September the 12th, 1944 in Galveston, Texas His mother's name was Sadie Marie Carter and his father's name was Melvin A. White some of you hawk-eyed listeners may have already caught the fact that Barry's last name when he was born was Carter and not White. And that is because his father, Melvin, had been all up in his mother Marie's ear telling her how beautiful she was, you know, how she was everything and how she was the woman for him, only for her to get pregnant and find out that he was married. And not only was the man married, child, there's some folks out here talking about he had kids too. So he had like a whole nother family. According to rumor, this broke Marie's heart, which I'm sure it did. And when she had her son, she gave him her last name instead of his father's last name, White. And although Marie's heart was broken, it seems eventually that she picked up the pieces and moved right on out of Melvin's life. The problem is, though, she probably should have just left those pieces of her broken heart right there on the floor. Because, child, don't you know they saying that when she got to her new location, she got with another doggone man who was whispering sweet nothings in her ear. And at the end of it, all that he provided her with was another doggone son. Yes, this was Barry's younger brother, and his name was Daryl. Now, after Daryl's birth, Marie had had enough of the cat daddy player games that men played and she instead focused on raising her two sons and honey let me tell you something she had to focus like real hard because word on the street is that them boys was bad child said they was hoodlums honey well let me say this Barry not so much he was still pretty good but that younger brother Daryl child they say you don't want to run into him but Barry at this time was not a huge problem. In fact, Barry actually started off being a really good kid. He went to church, he sang in the choir, which really pleased his mother, and he had a thing for classical music, and that was because his mother had a thing for classical music. And his love for classical as well as any other type of music started to grow when his mother brought home a piano. And when Barry hopped on that piano and started playing with no problem, he also discovered that he had a musical talent. So for a while, that is what was a part of his life. He used to sing and play piano around the house. And then one day when he was around 14 years old, his mother is just sitting in the kitchen and it's the morning time and Barry comes in and he's like, Mama, I won't. I mean, he just stopped. You know, he just startled. And his mother is also startled. And she looking around like, uh, you know, what man y'all got? 
got in here. Bear, I know you ain't set up there and let somebody in this doggone house while you ain't set up there and ask me, you know. And Barry is kind of just like looking at her and she's glaring back at him. And then she realizes that nobody is in her house. So now she's really looking at him and Barry is also still looking crazy. And then finally he says, Mama. And she's like, <gasps> Oh my gosh, Barry, my son. And then she just starts crying and she starts smiling because she realizes that her son is a man. Yes, Barry White's deep, deep voice had broken at 14. And his mother, of course, is happy as well as kind of sad, you know, because it's bittersweet because her son has turned into a man. So that was a happy moment for young Barry, but also around that time, trouble started to brew its ugly head. You see, Barry White lived in a neighborhood where the kids were tough. In fact, there were so many thugs and gangs that, I mean, he lost count. And when you live in a place like that, people like to pick on you and they like to beat you up. And with all that type of behavior going on, did you really think Barry White Big Old Tail was gonna be sitting up there still playing on the piano? Heck no, because that would have made him a very easy target for people to pick on him. I mean, he basically would have looked like a lame. Plus, his younger brother Daryl was already out there. He was already thugging. He decided that now he wanted to be tough. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, he's not going to be the butt of the joke. So he just joins in and he starts thugging and gang banging. And Barry got caught up in that street life, honey. I'm talking about all the way up in the street life. Oh, honey, to Barry, it wasn't nothing better than just walking around being tough. Beating folks up when he want to. Pushing folks down when he want to. Robbing folks in the streets and burglarizing and folks home he was a true gangster and he was a part of a true gang and at this time he was really a complete menace and that's just the way it was and honestly with his size and weight i mean i'm sure he felt unstoppable but come here listen to this the t on the street say that he was unstoppable child it's all kind of rumors out here talking about how barry didn't play and how he'll split your doggone wig in a quick second and throw you all across that doggone pavement honey you didn't mess with barry white at this time but here's the thing about it if you thought that was tough you didn't want to see his brother baby they said his brother daryl was worse than that and not only was barry tough out in these streets his thuggish tail was tough off up in their bedroom too you see there was a young girl named mary who was walking around swinging her little stuff up and down the streets and baby when barry saw her next thing you know she was swinging her stuff up and down the sheet and by the time barry was 16 years old gossip says that mary had birthed him two children so that was that and that was Barry throughout his teenage years and most people wrote him off as just a thug who would go to prison or who would die or who would go to prison and die they really just wrote him off to be you know nothing and Barry seemed to confirm these thoughts especially when he was caught stealing thirty thousand dollars worth of Cadillac tires then police caught him and put him in jail he had to serve four months at first you know Barry tried to retain this tough exterior you know what I'm saying mm, what you looking at but honey as he got to sit in there a little bit longer he started to see just how tough other people were and he also started to see just stuff he didn't like I mean this was jail and then his little tail started to get scared you know what I'm saying started looking around looking crazy then and then his truth came and slapped him in his face and that truth was is that he didn't want to do this he didn't want to live like this he didn't want to die like this he wanted more out of life I mean who wants to live on the outskirts of poverty and only can get money when you robbing somebody or beating somebody up nobody wants to live like this and Barry didn't either so he wanted to find out what he can do to make something of himself now gossip says he did not automatically just go to music you know what i'm saying like that idea didn't just like ooh, you know come to his head but after sitting there for a little while longer and listening to elvis not sure what he listened to but it said that elvis helped influence him that is when he finally decided like hmm you know what i'm saying i got a little bit of musical talent maybe i can do something in the music industry so after barry's jail sentence is over i I think this is when he actually marries his girlfriend Mary and I know that they do end up having two more children and don't quote me on that but I think this is when they got married but what I do know is that now that Barry is out of jail and back on the streets he realizes that he has very little prospects you know what I mean he doesn't even really have much direction you know so he's trying his hardest not to succumb to his past lifestyle he doesn't want to do that anymore and right when he feels himself like on the brink a friend calls and this friend wants Barry to join his group 
And of course this friend would call Barry White and ask him to join his group because that friend knew if he could get Barry White's deep voice on a record and that record would do numbers, Oh, baby, it was all over for all the other deep voice talkers out there. You know what I'm saying? And if y'all don't know what I mean by deep voice talkers when it comes to a group, I'm talking about them folks as, uh, Hey, baby, I was sad last night. I just wanted another chance. You know, they sit up there and they talk over the music when it's going. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It would have been over in a flash for them had Barry White been on a record that really did numbers. Thing is, though, is that although some records might have been made, none of those records really did any numbers. So Barry moved along, and after being with that group, I do believe he was in possibly about two or three more groups. And I think that one of those groups was called The Upfronts, and I think they recorded at least one song together, but no matter what happened with these groups in the end Barry felt the need to go off on his own and if I'm not mistaken this is around the time that he went to Hollywood and when he went to Hollywood he didn't have any money he didn't have anything in fact it is said that he walked from wherever he was at I'm not sure where he was exactly and he walked 20 miles just to get to Hollywood just to see if this is what he wanted to do you know what I'm saying just to breathe in the air and see hey do I really want to pursue this music thing like for real and it said that when he got there, he didn't see any gangbangers. He didn't see folks pushing, shoving, arguing. And he was like, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? I can see myself living here. I do want to pursue this music thing fully. And from there, he put the pedal to the metal, honey, and he took off. Then he came right back down. Because honestly, things just would not work out for Barry White. You know what I'm saying? He had to really understand that he had to push through stuff and it was not just going to happen like that for him. But then in the mid-1960s when Barry was just about dead, broke, and naked without a dime to his name, someone from Bronco Records called him and offered him a job as their A&R man. So now he a and r man, honey. You know what I'm saying? His profile starting to grow just a tad. People don't really know him. You know what I mean? But his profile starting to grow just a little bit because he's a part of a record label. And when you are a part of a record label, you start to see all these new faces. Really, really pretty faces. So soon, Barry started to sip some of the TT Kool-Aid, honey. Chai, he was just testing TT from woman to woman. You know, he was getting his groove on. And that would have been cool, but he was married. Married, and Mary was sitting at home and Mary wasn't having this so eventually they ended up splitting up and the split up happened in 1969 and soon after that they divorced and Barry possibly might have felt bad about the breakup of his marriage but on the other end his career was really starting to pick up he was doing a fantastic job as the A&R man for Bronco Record and then in 1970 he became a producer now nobody really knew just how good Barry was going to be at this producing job but child don't worry about it cause honey he had an ace up his sleeve. He basically saw how successful Motown was with the Supremes and so Barry felt like hey why don't I just follow that? Why don't I just create my own girl group and make them like the new Supreme? And around this time, Gossip says he was working with a lady named Trixie. And once he told Trixie what he was looking to do, that's when Trixie was like, oh, don't worry about it, baby. I got you. And she ended up calling three women. Their names were Linda James, Diane Taylor, and Glodine James. And so Trixie calls up the girls and she's basically like, hey, girls, I got this new young black producer and honey, he is hot stuff, honey. I mean, he will really blow you away and so now he's looking for three girls because he wants a girl group so do y'all think y'all can swing it linda james is like heck yeah we can swing it and trixie is like right on girlfriend right on well y'all come on to the studio and meet this guy his name is barry white and so the girls head up to meet Barry, and of course, they are looking fabulous, honey. And hold on, I want to get serious right here. Like, they were very, very beautiful, like, for real. Like, this is real fabulous. You know what I'm saying? Look them up when you get a chance when I tell you about them. But, uh, child, these women with some hot stuff, child. So anyway, back to the story. You know, they walk in looking good, smelling good. You know, just generally wanting to impress. And Barry is just kind of sitting on the stool, looking up at the women as they walk in one by one. Hi, I'm Linda. Hello. Oh, I'm Diane. Hi, I'm Glodine. And it was that one right there. Woo! Baby, that last one right there that blew his mind. And so Barry is like, mm, mm, mm. Miss Glodine, Miss Glodine, Miss Glodine. My, my, my. That show is a pretty name. Everybody else giggling and laughing, but Glodine is like, 
Thank you. And of course, I wasn't there. I'm imagining all this. But I'm saying this is because I heard that Miss Glodine was not easily impressed. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was not a easy catch where she would just be like, oh. <laughs> you know, that just was not her. She was very much like, you know, she just wasn't easily impressed. Let's leave it at that. So Barry sets the girls to work. And the whole time they are working, he is really glued in to Miss Glodine. And I mean, she is really outstanding, y'all. I mean, her legs long like pencils. Her eyes has an almost almond shape to them. Her smile is big and wide. You know, her skin is a deep brown coconut. Woo! Child. Barry is in love, honey. He can feel it all through his bones. He was so smitten with her that soon after their first time working together, Barry tells one of the other girls, and I believe it was Trixie if I'm not mistaken, but he tells her that he's interested in Glodine. You know what I'm saying? He wants to talk to her. And so Trixie tells Glodine that Barry is interested in her, and you know what Glodine does? She shoots him down like an arrow, baby. She ain't got time. In fact, gossip says that she kind of just shrugged it off and was like, you know, mm, no thanks. I'm not, I'm not interested in a relationship at this time. And Barry, by this time, had been kind of used to pulling women. You know what I'm saying? So when he got denied or when he got rejected, baby, you know his hair went from this to this. But, you know, oh well, he had to respect it. So at this point in time, he left Miss Glodine to her own devices and he set off to work really hard to make his girl group stars. First things first, he gave them a name and that name was called Love Unlimited. Secondly, he had them record a few songs. One of those songs was called Walking in the Rain with the One I Love, which turned out to be a really good song. Barry liked it and the girls liked it, so they put the song out over the airwaves and the song took off. It reached number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 6 on the Billboard R&B chart. And it actually became Barry as well as Love Unlimited's first million dollar seller song. So the song was a success, you know what I mean? Barry had done it. He was happy, the girls were happy, everybody was happy. And not only were the girls happy, they appreciated and admired how hard Barry was on them to get it right and how hard he worked to achieve this success. And in other words, Barry had really proved himself. You know what I'm saying? He proved himself to be a man of his word, proved himself to be a hard worker. And so y'all know what started happening after this, honey. Y'all know somebody eyes started cutting to the side. You know what I'm saying? Somebody started smirking and smiling a little bit more. Y'all know it was Glodine. So Barry had finally caught her attention. And at this time, that's really all it was. But soon it started turning into a little bit of flirting. And soon that little bit of flirting started turning into a little bit of dating. And from what I've learned for Glodine, dating Barry was a joy. And I guess like Glodine was, I guess, a dream girl for Barry. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he had never pulled a woman of that caliber. Or maybe he had and she still stood out some type of way. But it really seemed like he looked at Glodine like, you know, Oh my gosh, this angel, because he treated her as such. He doted on her, made her feel very special and very loved and let her know that if she was his, you know, she would be his everything. She was quite literally wrapped up in his love, wrapped up in his affection. And before you know it, Glodine was Barry's main thing. And we will delve a little deeper into Glodine and Barry in just a second. But for right now, let me go back to his career for a little bit. So Barry had done what he needed to do for Unlimited Love. And he was still working with them. And he actually started something like an Unlimited Love Orchestra or something like that. And Gossip says it was also around this time that he started working with the members of White Heat. And who else worked for White Heat? Bobby and Tommy DeBarge. But that didn't really last that long. And then after that project was over, Barry started to look to work with a male soloist. He wanted to make a male soloist famous, just like he had done with his girl. But from what Gossip says, all of the guys that he had singing the demos, I'm guessing they just weren't good or, you know, people didn't like it, management or something. I don't know why that didn't go, but I do know that somebody by the last name of Nunez started persuading Barry to sing his own songs. You know what I'm saying? They started feeling like he could do a better job than these other guys that he was getting to sing his song. And I didn't know this, but rumor has it Barry fought that. Rumor says that Barry was like 
comfortable with being just a producer. He had given up his dreams of singing. It says that he kind of just wanted to grow behind the scenes of the music industry. Now, I didn't know that. I thought the man had always just wanted to be a singer. But like I said, rumor says that he didn't really want to. But whatever the case, he finally was like, okay, you know what? Screw it. I'll sing the song myself. You know, I'll just give it a shot. And one of those songs came out in 1973 and the name of that song was I'm Gonna Love You Just a Little More Baby. And this song rose to number one on the R&B charts and number three on the pop charts. It was a hit. Matter of fact, it stayed in top spots for 40 weeks. Barry White had a ride. Other songs were like Never Never Gonna Give You Up and You're My Everything, Can't Get Enough of Your Love Babe, you know. So basically, y'all know what happens from here as far as Barry White's career, all right? Y'all know what time it is, honey. It is time to get to the juicy gossip and the scandalous tea. Let's get to it, baby. First things first is this. Did y'all know that apparently when Barry White finally made it and got his hit songs that there was a group of people who did not want anything to do with Barry White. In fact, they hated him. And you know why? They felt like he was biting the style of Isaac Hayes. They felt like Barry White was faking his voice, child. They was just like, you know, where this dude come from? He's sitting up there trying to talk like Isaac, trying to walk like Isaac. Like, what's going on? So they didn't have anything for Barry White, and they wanted him to get his curled up head and his deep voice and get up out of here. This next bit of tea is kind of off the wall, but I still want to kind of put it out there. Did y'all know that it's claimed that Barry White has had his beard since he was 13 years old? Like, uh, what kind of werewolf type of stuff is going on here? I don't know, but that's what the rumors say. Now, listen at this next rumor. It is claimed that Barry's brother, Daryl, as well as one of his sons, got bodies in the streets, child. They say that they have committed murders, and I guess, I don't know if they got away with it or what, but it is said that you do not mess with Barry White's family because they have a string of, you know, uh, thugness or something. I don't know what to call it, but apparently they would get right with you, and you could very well end up missing. And his brother, Daryl, has passed away now, and he got murdered in the streets. There is another rumor out there that claims that when Barry White was doing all those interviews about, yeah, you know, I was a thug back in the day, but I had to straighten myself up. I didn't want to live like that. Child, they said that he was sitting up there lying, stone face lying. They said that Barry White was a thug to the very end. He just learned how to put on another face in public. I honestly believe this because remember in the Jackie Wilson video, that whole debacle that went down with Bobby Womack, where it's claimed that Barry Barry White almost beat Bobby Womack to death over his money. You know what I'm saying? So well, he really seems to get down like that. And, and then you have that other episode where it's rumored that Barry pulled out a gun on a studio head, a studio head of 20th Century Fox. You know, Barry had needed his money. The guy acted like he wasn't going to pay him all of the money. And Barry was like, you ain't, you, you, you're not going to pay me all my money. And that dude was like, uh, Here's your money. Here's your money, sir. You know what I'm saying? So they say Barry didn't play. And then there's another rumor. And this rumor basically talks about one day when Barry had went out to eat or he was walking down the street or something like that. Whatever the case, his ex-wife, Mary, pulls up and is kind of driving beside him, okay? She is in a brand new car. She is styled, and I mean just looking good, has slick to the side. Not only is she looking good, she got her new boyfriend beside her. He is looking GQ, like they are just looking it. And then all of a sudden, Barry's children from the back seat are like, Daddy, Daddy! They see their father, so they jump out to their father, and they run up to him to hug him. And they're like, Daddy, we miss you, we miss you. Baby? Barry looks down to hug his kids and all he sees is nappy head, beady beads, ripped up clothes, uh, holes everywhere, shoes falling apart, pants, and he can't believe it. He cannot believe it. It is claimed that he was paying Mary about $10,000 a month and she hadn't gave none of it to his kids, child. Spending it on herself and her new man and whatever she wanted. Got Barry's kids out here looking a mess. Cha! It said that immediately Barry was fuming. He started walking to his car, walking to his car. And it said that his friend was in the car waiting on him, okay? So he gets to the car and all of a sudden Barry starts digging through the glove compartment. He ain't saying nothing. He's silent. He's just on a mission. And so the friend is like, Barry, what's up? And so the friend is like, Barry, what's up? 
Barry don't say nothing. The friend is like, dude, what's going on? What you looking for? Next thing you know, the friend saw a little bit of silver gleaming or a little bit of black, something shiny. I don't know what color. But he saw a little bit of something gleaming. Honey, Barry had went for the gun, baby. He was about to kill Mary and that man. And so the friend started grabbing his arm and was like, Barry, no, no, don't do it. And Barry was like, let my hand go. You want me to kill you? And the friend was like, no, listen, Barry, it ain't worth it, ain't worth it. And Barry was like, it is worth it. I'm about to kill this bee. You know what I'm saying? And the friend was like, don't do it, don't do it. And so Barry finally, like, thought about it. He let the gun go. And he was like, I swear to God, man, if this girl keep playing with me, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill her and her new boyfriend or whatever. And so he comes back to his kids. His kids are still crying. They're like, Daddy, we don't want to live with you. You know, Mama don't treat us right and all this kind of stuff. And it said that Barry scooped up his children. And from that day on, those children lived with him. And to build on top of that rumor right there, it is claimed that Barry White was a great father. I mean, stupendous. Said that he loved his kids very much and he gave them time, attention, and affection. Now this next rumor is, what? The scandal, child. The scandal. It's time to get a little messy, you know what I'm saying? A little dirty. Now listen to this, y'all. Rumor on the street says that when Barry White was working with White Heat, Glow Dean used to print her little fine self around. Bobby DeBarge was like kind of looking at her, you know what I'm saying? Smiling, kind of winking at her, letting her know that he was interested. And child, don't you know the gossip says that Glow Dean was down too? Now, hey, I don't know how true this is, you know what I'm saying? It could have just been some flirting, I don't know. But rumor has it that they actually slept together. And to be fair, I do want to make it a point to say that Glow Dean and Barry were supposedly not married at this time, okay? But they were said to be in a relationship, okay? I don't know how serious things had gotten, I don't know. But let me tell you something, it didn't matter. Because when Barry found out, he didn't give a doggone if Glow Dean was his wife, his girlfriend, or just a doggone friend. Maybe he got Bobby and Tommy DeBarge up out of there and told them to never come back. Honey, he was furious. He was fuming. Child, he was so mad. He probably saw another light-skinned person walking up the street and probably just went up there and slapped that person for no reason, child. The person just sitting up there talking about, ah! What happened? And buried and ran on home. He was probably just that mad. But whatever happened, apparently Barry did not hold it against Claudine because they did indeed end up getting married in 1974. And once they got married, Claudine and Barry settled into their marriage. And it said that they were a very passionate couple. They were very loving. You know what I'm saying? They love to spend their time together. They love taking all these pictures and just a really happy couple. But honey, the good time started getting slower and slower. And next thing you know, all Glodine heard was, here I am, girl, practice on me. Yes, because Barry was out here sleeping with every doggone body. They said that Barry White pretty much had a harem of women. Said that women were always in and out of his life constantly. Like after every concert, he would take a woman from the audience and he would sleep with this woman, I mean, just like he was a single man. You know what I'm saying? Like he had just lost his mind. And the problem was, he was not married to a docile woman. He was not married to a woman who was just gonna sit there and be like, oh, well, you know, this is show business. He didn't marry somebody like that. Oh no, he married somebody who was ready. And child rumor has it that every chance Glodine got, them nails came right across Barry's face. She got in his tail all the time time because he was cheating all the time and Glodine wasn't having it you know what I'm saying so it said that they would have very knock down drag out fights you know they were very uh they both had tempers you know what I'm saying they just had like a really really explosive relationship for a while and get this though it wasn't only Barry who was paying for his cheating ways child no they said the Glodine would go after the women too baby they said that she beat up many a women it's one story that claims that she called Barry in a car with some woman she went to town whooping her tail that night it's another story out that claims that glodine called barry i don't know if she called them in their house or she caught them in a hotel room or it may have even been where she caught the fact that Barry was about to go to this hotel room and instead of him going she got in his tail and then she showed up at the hotel room whatever the case whichever one of those is true it ended with Glodine going to pound town on that woman's face it uh, hey Glodine did not play you know what I'm saying and I can only imagine girl her coming in that hotel room you know just you know what I'm saying just bursting the door oh so you was here to sleep with my husband so you were sitting here to see barry oh, okay well i'm glodine hi b 
Kapow! Glow Dean didn't play that. I even read on a gossip blog where it was some couple that was friends with Glow Dean and Barry, okay? And they came to visit them a lot. Honey, don't you know they say they came over to Barry and Glow Dean house one night and they looked up. Glow Dean just throwing all Barry's clothes all across the reel. Throwing his clothes all across the reel. So yes, it said that she had to deal with a lot. All right, y'all. It's finna get a little freaky deaky in here, okay? Finna get a little nasty, okay? But I got to say this, and I honestly do not believe this rumor. I think somebody was making this up and being stupid. But child, they say that Barry invented his own way of orally doing stuff. You know what I'm saying? They said that he would get down there. Next thing you know, he'll just... Ooh, you know what I'm saying? The deep voice and, you know, the vibration from the deep voice was supposed to make the women go crazy and, you know, they would shoot in like one second flat. You know what I'm saying? But that sounds made up to me. I'm sorry, that sounds made up. It might be possible. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you women have to ask your men to try it on you. But apparently... Uh, he had a deep enough voice that he'll just go down and kind of place his mouth and be like, oh, and then that would just make the woman explode. And y'all, I don't know. That rumor sound, <laughs> I'm sorry. That rumor sound kind of stupid, but hey, maybe he did. And even though that rumor sounds kind of stupid and don't seem true to me, it is said to be true that his voice is used to make animals made. It's claimed that they would put his voice in an aquarium inside the shark tank and the vibration would make the sharks want to mate, you know, so I don't know. Now listen to this tea rumor. It is said that Barry White had a young girl that worked in the studio with him and child, she tried to R. Kelly him, honey. Listen, I don't have many details. All I can say is that this girl, she was younger, and she used to be trying to put it on Barry White. But Barry, he was too smart. You know what I'm saying? He was not finna get caught up in that. And then also, I guess he wasn't attracted to little girls. So not only was he too smart, he wasn't attracted to little girls. But uh, supposedly somebody was either worked in his studio or used to come by his studio, and she was trying to do some things. And Barry was like, no. Also, I don't know if y'all knew this, but in the Love Unlimited Orchestra, Barry had a saxophone player that could blow this guy nobody really knew who he was but he could blow and everybody was like wow you have the best saxophone player well supposedly this saxophone player wanted to be kenny g you know what i'm saying the famous saxophone player so he started out with barry white apparently and then listen to this in 1974 barry white was just like you know i have done the dang on thing i have worked hard i've come out with these successful songs like this year is mine this time is mine so he feels like he should get whatever he wants it honey he went to the grammys that year and got his bubble all the way burst cha he thought he was gonna get the best new artist they gave that thing to Beth midler and they said that barry was stewing in his own anger he was so mad that honey he almost walked over there and cursed Beth midler out i almost pulled a kanye honey he was so upset but instead he just ended up boycotting the grammys because he felt like you know that wasn't right he just felt like that was his award so anyway to get back to his career barry explodes in the mid 1970s things are going his way he is a celebrity he is big time and he does well but by the 1980s things start to slow down and in 1981 he even recorded an album with his wife glow dean or maybe just one song i don't know but whatever the case he and his wife glow dean recorded a song together but it was nothing big like his other hits you know what i mean and on top of that Glow Dean was starting to get tired. Barry never really did slow down for real with this cheating. So at one point in time, Glow Dean was just sick of it. She was tired of it. Now, I'm not going to say that she hated Barry or that she was angry at Barry because it said that their separation was mutual. But I think she kind of just threw up her hands. You know what I'm saying? She couldn't take it no more. So it said that they did separate in the mid-1980s, I think. Whatever the case, don't know exactly the date that they separated, but I do know that it was only a separation. It was not a divorce. And it's claimed that even if she kind of wanted a divorce, that Barry wasn't going to give her a divorce anyway. He loved that woman. She was his everything. He just could not or would not be the man that she wanted, but he vowed to always take care of his glow dean. He does record some music in the 1980s, but it's really just a slump for him, to be honest with you. But by 1994, there is a renewed interest in Barry White. And y'all already know why, because I done my intro on it, and honey, like I said before, practice 
what you preach. You know what I'm saying? So everybody go crazy. Ah, you know. And so a renewed interest in Barry. He started selling records again. Women wanting to climb that long ponytail he got looking like Steven Seagal. And so now that the spotlight is back on Barry, you know what I'm saying? He back on the scene, honey. You know what I'm saying? He ready to hang out. He ready to tour and all kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden it's like, eh. Slow down, brother. And he really had to slow down because in 1995, after a concert, he almost fell out. He almost collapsed. And then soon after that incident, he ended up having a minor stroke due to high blood pressure. But that was not the only reason. Barry White was not taking care of himself anyway. Like, he was just overdoing stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was a smoker, and he smoked like 150 cigarettes a day. That's the way he lived his life. Over ate, over slept, over uh, smoked, over did everything, over did the women. You know, just living his life any kind of way and his body was shutting down he was paying for it so i think it was around 95 96 97 somewhere in there that he had a nurse that used to come to his home and care for him because you know he had to stay home to recuperate whatever you want to call it and so this nurse came to care for him and when she cared for him she cared for his whole body okay and then after she cared for his whole body, they ended up in a relationship, I guess you want to call it. And her name was Catherine Denton. And gossip says that people around Barry did not really like Catherine Denton from the start. You know what I'm saying? They didn't really like this woman. They felt like that her motives were not good. And I honestly don't know if this woman was a lot younger than him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what she looked like. But Gossip on the Street says that people didn't like her. You know, Glodine didn't like her. And you might be like, well, Glodine, that's uh, her husband. You know what I'm saying? Of course, she's not going to like her. But Glodine wasn't the only one. Some of his friends didn't like her. Some of his family. People did not like this Catherine Denton woman because they felt like that she just was not pure hearted. You know what I'm saying? They felt like she was after something. But no matter what other people thought about this Catherine Denton lady, Barry White liked her or loved her. You know, I'm not sure. But I do know that she was his woman. He claimed her as his mate. So apparently he saw something in her. Barry was not in good health. Barry couldn't really do the things that he could do when he was younger. And then when the year 2000 came around, things started to get really bad for Barry White. In fact, he tried to do a performance that year, but he couldn't because he could barely stand up. Then in 2002, he was hospitalized with kidney failure and then in May of 2003 he suffered a stroke now y'all hear everything I just named off to y'all okay everything that he was going through now somehow in between Barry going through all of these medical problems you can't even hardly stand up Catherine Denton becomes pregnant and she is carrying their child. Um, she is excited about it. I don't know if Barry is excited about it. I have no idea. Some type of magical way after Barry has been going through all of these problems. Catherine, I do believe, ends up giving birth to this baby. And I don't know if she and Barry share a moment together. I have no idea. But I do know that Barry's family claims that in 2003, Catherine shut the doors to other people. You know what I'm saying? She would not let Barry's other loved ones come to see him. And it was basically just him and her. And a lot of his family and friends feel like Barry White actually passed away without any love. Without any real true love around him. They feel like he passed away with a leech around him and I'm gonna tell you why they felt this way because Barry did indeed end up dying in July of 2003 as a matter of fact it was 4th of July 2003 and he passed away of severe cardiac arrest he was only 58 years old okay but anyways like I said he passed away and Catherine immediately is like you know crying you know what I'm saying and Catherine is immediately crying you know what I mean she is broken her child does not have her father she wants her child to have her father as a matter of fact she wants her child to have her father so bad she ends up naming the child bariana icy white or bariana ivy white one of those is supposed to be the right name so you know what i'm saying she obviously wants this child to have a connection with her father barry and bariana all right so Catherine is like, oh my gosh, Bariana is not going to be able to grow up with her father. This is so sad. Bariana needs Barry. She needs him. And she takes all these tears and stuff to the court system. And she's like, you know, I need to make sure that Bariana is provided for. Barry wanted this for this child. He wanted to give this child his name. He wanted to give this child all of his money, everything he had to give. And when she gets there, the judge is like, okay. And then all of a sudden, Glodine said, boop, stop. 
Who do you think you are, Heifer? We don't believe you. We don't even believe that's Barry's child. Like, you need to have a DNA test done. And Catherine is like, really? Barriana is her name. Of course, this is Barry's child. But you know what I'm saying? Since y'all want to do this with y'all hating tales, we will get the DNA test done. And they get the DNA test done, and Catherine Denton is never heard from again. Nobody knows where she or Barriana went. They just kind of disappeared into thin air because Barry was not Barianna's father. Child, that whole thing was a mess, and that woman, I'd be ashamed of myself. Unless she really did think that Barry was that child's father, but I highly doubt it, because how is she getting pregnant by Barry? Barry can't even stand up. Barry can't even move. But anyway, so Barry White passes away. His estates, everything passed to Glodine because he loved Glodine, and he wanted to make sure that she was well provided for, which is why they never got divorced. But since then, there have been mess with that. There are other children that Glodine is not their mother and they have come out and said Glodine has shut them off. They have said that she's taken all of Barry's money for herself and she kind of just don't give a doggone about them and it's like you know oh well screw y'all you know what I'm saying I'm taking this money for myself don't know how true it is but these children have complained that they've tried to sue uh Barry's estate you know what I'm saying tried to sue Glodine and I don't really know how any of that stuff has worked out or will work out but Supposedly, it is a mess when it comes down to Barry White's legacy and his estate. It's a lot of infighting between family members, and that is just really oh so sad. And just to give you a number, he supposedly had nine children. And hold on, let me drop a little bit more tea at the very end. Supposedly, two of those children came while he was married to Glodine, but they were not by Glodine. I don't know if it's true or not, but child, woo! Too much mess, scandalous, scandalous tea, just like we like it, baby. So anyways, this is the end of the old Hollywood scandalous tale for Mr. Barry White, I swear, y'all. After this, y'all will not have to wait another month for a video. And y'all know I really don't get down like that. Y'all don't even try me. Don't even do me. Don't do me, sir. Don't do me, sir. Like, for real. Don't play me. Y'all know that y'all usually ain't got to wait no whole doggone month for no video. You know what I'm saying? Like I said before, Ashley just had some things going on. But I'm so grateful that y'all still love me enough and were patient enough to stick with me. All right, y'all. I love y'all so much. Bye. I will see you guys soon.